Good morning, everyone. What a lovely, lovely, lovely crowd. Wonderful people. Thank you. Just a couple of reminders. Um, when we do communion on my side of the establishment, we're going to be standing right out there where Sheila is. So please kind of come around. Get your union host and then back to your seat. Um, second thing is that in our, our uh, Faith in Action ministry, we are seeking a replacement for the Minnehaha Food Shelf Supervisor. He'll be retiring very, very soon. So if you're interested in serving in some capacity with that, please see. Chris, ah, Chris, raise your hand. There he is, back by the tree. And let's not forget to support our, our bishop um, this afternoon. He's being installed or seated at uh, St. Mark's Cathedral at 5 p.m. And uh, Canon um, Pister is also being installed or whatever you do with a new canon <laughs> at that service as well. 5 p.m. It's going to be live streamed. If you can make it, I'm sure the bishop would love to see some of our early faces. Now let's just take a moment to pray a prayer to prepare for our service.
Blessed be the one holy and ever living God. Glory to God forever and ever. God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, we hold fast to those that shall endure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 54 together. Say to you, O God, God by your name, name. you are my life and my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Be it hears to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper.
gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying. They were afraid to ask him. Then he came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? And they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another, Who was the greatest? He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. A verse from the letter of James. Every generous gift, every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above. But, is there such a thing as a perfect gift? I mean, that's really hard digest. I mean, if you're going to someone's house for a dinner party, you take flowers, they might be allergic to them. And if you get your dad a new necktie for Christmas, I mean, do people really wear neckties anymore? Look around. I remember finding what seemed to me to be a perfect gift. That is, a giant hook and ladder fire truck <laughs> under the Christmas tree. Perfect. I was an ecstatic elementary school kid. And that's the very last memory I have of that fire truck. <laughs> Maybe not such a perfect gift. Then I remember my high school graduation. My mother talked often, often about receiving a wristwatch, her very own wristwatch, when she graduated from high school, and it was a Timex. So I knew that I'd get a watch for high school graduation, and I decided to ask for an Accutron. Now, that, for those of you who don't know, that was one of the very first electronic watches. It had a tiny tuning fork inside that that vibrated at a constant F sharp. <laughs> it was. I could start singing from that. Just <laughs> My mother told me, of course, that those watches were far too expensive. And I understood, because they were back then in 1967, $125. <laughs> I'd get a Timex, and I would be happy with it. And I was pretty much adjusted to that. That would be the perfect Timex gift. So there was that warm, sunny summer morning when my parents were at the breakfast table, which they always did alone, but they called me to join them. That was totally bizarre. So I did. I thought, what did I do now? They sat me down, and there was a box in front of me, and I opened it. It was vibrating F-sharp. 
I got my very own Accutron. Wow. And like any mature high school gift recipient, I started to cry. <laughs> I wore that watch for a lot of years, every day. And it's still in a box in my dresser somewhere. It doesn't work anymore. So maybe the perfection of the gift was in the thought, in the sentiment, the surprise, the care, the joy, the happiness. And remembering all of these things even now, 54 years later. We tend to think of gifts, especially very generous gifts, as milestones, as unforgettable, as life-changing, as empowering. But that's all about the gift itself, pretty much. About the thing, the watch, or the money, the trust fund. And when we do that, we're in trouble. Because the value of those things doesn't last over time. The perfection in a gift, you see, is not in the gift itself. It is in the remembering. It is in the humanity that is wrapped up in that moment. It is in the godly life that it expresses, that is warmth and family and relationship. In the unwavering support care of community, in faith, in truth. This year's stewardship campaign here at St. Luke and James begins today. Its title is Every Perfect Gift. Well, what are the gifts we're talking about? What are our perfect gifts here at St. Luke and James? Well, I think that some of us come into this community expecting to find a Timex. But I, for one, know we have been given an Accutron. <laughs> the point, though, is not that we have some thing. It is that this community of faith is something, the very body of Christ, the very body of Christ sitting here in these chairs on the lawn, at home in front of the computer, we are something, we are someone, every perfect gift. So much has happened to shake us this year. Sort of think of it as like the uh, magician pulling the tablecloth out from under the place settings of fine china. And we fear that we're going to crash to the floor. We hope that we can remain upright and strong, ready to serve. Well, I've seen over and over that our china is still on the table. I've seen over and over that we have what it takes. We can do this. Whatever this, the Holy Spirit, tells us this is. Now, there will be times we have doubts. There will be times when we are shaken, when we want to fold up into ourselves. But those selves are the very body of Christ. And folding up into that can kill that body. We have been given the perfection, the perfect gift of each other. And we have been given the perfect gift of God in Christ, living in every one of us. And frolicking between us. Fun word, isn't it? Makes me want to frolic. <laughs> frolic. It says something to me that's light, airy. Something that bounces here and there. It never seems to be bothered by anything. Frolic. Outside my house, there are prairie grasses. Other side of a little patch of lawn. In those grasses are a lot of milkweed plants. 
Our neighborhood is pretty windy, even windier than this moment in this spot. It feels, at least to me, windier than most places I've ever lived. Maybe that's only my imagination, I don't know. But I look out at the milkweeds and I see monarch butterflies frolicking amongst them. And I wonder how they do it. How do you do that? They were so light and airy and such creatures of delicate loveliness. How do you control your flight in these breezes? And I think, well, they must have some hidden asset, something I don't get. Something that I don't know, can't see, something that allows them to do that. When we gather here, especially on Sunday mornings, there's a lot of frolicking going on, people setting up chairs, the altar, greeting each other, the choir practicing, and lots of motion and energy like butterflies frolicking in milkweed. Light and airy, lovely, lovely. Because we have every perfect gift. We have what it takes. A butterfly gives thanks for its very life by being a servant. A butterfly gives thanks by serving. It carries pollen from one plant to another. It's one of those famous pollinators we hear so much about. It gives thanks by sharing what it has. Pollen, fertility, beauty, life itself. That's what we're about in our every perfect gift emphasis. We have what it takes because it has been gifted to us and in us. And now we are called to give thanks for these gifts by sharing them as a butterfly shares its pollen. way, Jesus is addressing this with his disciples today. They're arguing over which one of them is the greatest, funded a very boring argument. I mean, who is smarter, who works harder, who teaches better, who follows more closely, who gives more? But when the disciples engage in those all too human games, Jesus doesn't play along. He doesn't say, oh, stop it. You're pretty darn great, all of you guys. <laughs> Today, instead, he holds up a little child. He holds up a little child, much like several of those that we have with us. Thank you. Today. He's not doing it to make the disciples feel all soft and fuzzy inside but to have an example of how we should give right there on his lap. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Whoever gives care to this child gives care to God cares for the love that Jesus teaches, the love that Jesus is. Whoever appreciates the beauty of this creature knows the beauty of life. Whoever takes delight in others, in all of creation, takes delight in Jesus, in every perfect gift, this delight, this joy calls us not to hoard these gifts or to argue about who deserves them or who has the most or if our community has enough of them. But instead, it calls us to use these gifts. To give them away. To give away our gifts as the butterfly gives away its pollen to every plant it visits. Our wonderful vestry had an even more wonderful meeting this week. Culminating a long, 
long time of deliberation, study, questioning, examining, listening, praying over, culminating in a spirit-led decision. St. James, I'm sorry, I'm the stickler on that. St. Luke and James will now begin to search for a rector to serve a full-time equivalency. This means that if one person is identified as the candidate and is properly called and approved, they will serve full time with appropriate compensation. This is because we need to be led in giving our gifts. Someone needs to teach us clearly and regularly. Someone needs to remind us that we are given all that we need. We receive the perfect gift of God's love living in us and drawing out the frolicsome side of our nature and asking us, begging us, to know the profound joy that comes in confidence, in the confidence that we have received and are receiving and shall receive every perfect gift. We can do this. We can be God's bold people. We can move through the community bringing the pollen of love and peace. We can do this. Because we receive God's love in Christ Jesus. That's every perfect gift. Amen. as you are able. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, only the Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being the Father, who in all for us, the heart of salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and on our side. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the words of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And it's the kingdom of our land. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, and his worship and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. gratitude for the gift of your spirit, which held us together throughout our time apart, and now blesses our reading. Each time we gather, let us continually create the space as new and as sacred 
blessing us with your spirit among us. O oh, great spirit, we offer thanks for all those who work tirelessly every day to hold our church communities together, but especially during times of crisis. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Craig, our bishop, our priests and deacons, and all lay ministers. O oh, great spirit, we offer thanks for our home, this Mother Earth. Give us the wisdom and desire to treat her with the preciousness with which you created her. Help us to remember to honor all your creatures, four or two-legged, of the sky, the earth, and the water. O oh, Great Spirit, we give you thanks for all nations. We ask that you blanket them all with your peace, and that this peace may fill the hearts of all who dwell in every state, every city, every community, and every neighborhood. Especially guide the people of our nation in the ways of justice, peace, truth, and reconciliation, that we may honor one another and serve the highest good. Help us to remember you have created us all equal, and that we are all related. O oh, Great Spirit, we offer thanks for blessing us beyond our understanding or our ability to say thank you for the gifts of family, friends, home, health, healing, prosperity, and abundance. We walk in gratitude, giving thanks silently or aloud. O oh, Great Spirit, receive our prayers. As it has been taught to us, when we enter the circle, gather as family, or reunite as community, we offer up our prayers. We know we carry with us the prayers of others and for others. And so we pray for Alice, Anne and Harlan, Bill and Jane, Bobby, Andy, Charlie, Dave, David S., Doug and Yvonne, Hannah, Jeannie, Joanna, Kathy B, Kathy H, Kevin, Lorraine, Lynn, Marilyn, Marlis, Marnie, Mary H, Mary and J, Mary Fred, Maxine, Neil, Nora, Renee, Richard, Rich and Anne, Ron H, Ruth P, Sarah S, Ted, and Theo. We offer up others, either silently or aloud. <laughs> oh, great spirit. We give honor to our ancestors and all others who have departed. London Bean, may your spirit of comfort support and uphold all those who mourn for them. O Great Spirit, O Lord our God, accept the fervent hope. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. With the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Oh, 
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are here truly sorry and we will repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be always with you. And all of us with you.
made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. In the name of the power and the glory of your grace, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be pleased. Hallelujah. The gifts of God are for the people of God.
peace. You are the body of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. We are continuing our Peace Day celebration. And Neil and Louise will be over at the tents on the foot of the steps to help you do some peace flags. And you can see some created that were done yesterday. We also have t-shirts available like the ones several of us are wearing. Um, they are $25 and we have various sizes available. If you'd like one, please, why don't you see me sometime in the next half an hour, and I can help you with that. And we appreciate you being here and hope you'll join us in our celebration. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. You all the just sort of classes. I think I'm giving you a bunch of the ones that my grand